Before getting started, I'd like to thank Thingiverse member Saga Workshop for providing the design for Alan Grant's Raptor Claw. The Saga Workshop design is presented in two halves and is also sized to be scaled up. I remixed this design by fusing the two halves together, enlarging the claw, and also adding some cracks. A crack-free claw design is also available. Click on the link in the description below to download the free STL files on Thingiverse. I printed the claw with support at a layer height of 0.12 mm and a speed of 50 mm per second. I recommend using an earthy filament color such as black, dark gray, or brown. If you accidentally sand through your texture paste and paint in later steps, it won't be a big deal if the filament shows through. After printing, smooth the object with 220 or 320 grit sandpaper. You don't need to make the object perfectly smooth, just bring down those ridges a bit. The texture paste that will be applied later will fill in those 3D print lines. Oh no! The Rancor! Ah uh, ah uh, ah! Uh. You didn't say the magic word! To prevent any clay or baking ingredients from potentially ruining the paint job on the claw, now is a great time to construct the display base. First, we'll take a look at the clay display base. I purchased a 2.2 pound package of air dry clay at a local craft store. Air dry clay is more pliable than oven baked clay. It is much easier to work the paints into the clay with air dry clay. 2.2 pounds will yield approximately two display stands. I used approximately half the package and rolled it into a ball. My craft store only had white clay so I had to add some color to make it look earthy. I used some Country Twill acrylic paint by Folk Art. You can use any acrylic paint that you choose. I worked the paint in by kneading the clay. The beige wasn't what I was going for, so I added a little bit of yellow ochre acrylic paint. After the beige yellow color was uniform, I added a little bit of dark gray acrylic paint. I didn't mix it in as much as the beige and yellow as I was going for a marbled earth effect. Using any kind of pipe or roller, flatten out the clay.
Next, crumple up some tin foil, go over the top of the clay to give it some texture. You can also use coarse sandpaper, an orange, brush bristles, or a Brillo pad for texture. You can also try pressing the clay onto the sidewalk or asphalt for texture. Press the claw into the center of the clay. To add a little more color contrast, try gently touching the clay with some dark brown and yellow acrylic paint in random areas. Use these colors sparingly. You just need a small dab with a paper towel, then pat it gently with some aluminum foil or other textured surface. The package says it usually takes about 24 hours to dry. Because of the large amount of clay that was used, my display base took about 48 hours to dry. To make the sand display base, Preheat your oven to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Combine one cup of sand, one cup of flour, one half cup of salt, and one half cup of water into a mixing container. Thoroughly mix the ingredients. These measurements will yield approximately two display bases. Place some aluminum foil on a baking sheet. Put about half of the sand clay mixture onto the baking sheet and mold the mixture into your desired shape. Place the claw in the middle to make an indentation. Gently remove the claw from the sand clay. It may stick to the claw. You can easily fix any imperfections after removing the claw. Bake the sand clay for one hour. When you remove it, it should be hard and ready to be used as a display base. Dinosaurs eat man. Woman inherits the earth. To hide the 3D print lines and add some age to the fossil, we'll make some texture paste. Combine four tablespoons of baby powder, one tablespoon of white school glue, and one tablespoon of black acrylic paint into a container. Stir the contents. If it appears thick, add a few drops of water. It should have the consistency of a paste. It should not be runny. If it is too runny, add a little bit more baby powder to the mixture. Apply the paste to one side of the claw using your fingertip. Rather than spreading it on like a brush, try patting it on to create a textured surface. Let the paste dry for about one hour, and then apply more paste to the other side. Let the second side dry for one hour. If the texture is too chunky, gently go over it with some sandpaper that you used in phase one. Be careful not to remove too much of the texture paste. If you do take off too much, simply add some more paste and let it dry again. As you can see, I tried a white claw prototype, but it didn't come out as I'd hoped. The black paste turned out much better in the end. Apply some dark brown acrylic paint with a paper towel. Blot the brown on in random areas and remove excess with another clean paper towel. You should have some nice contrast on the claw now with some black, the sanded areas appear dark gray, and a few spots of brown to make it look aged. Feel free to add additional colors. If you go with a cracked claw, I recommend filling the cracks with a beige colored paste. 
you can make some more texture paste using beige instead of black acrylic paint. If you have some wood filler putty on hand, that can also be used. Lastly, some air dry clay can be used. Paint alone will not fill in the cracks. It is better to use some kind of filler. 